The fact that I'm tired will either make this much better or much worse. Yeah. <laughs> you want to do some sort of intro here, or you want me to? Uh, you should do intros. I don't believe in intros. Okay. So, for the two people already on my stream... Oh, it's four now. Uh, this is kind of another uh, episode of what we did. What was it? Last night? Two nights ago? I don't two remember. Nights ago? Yeah. Two nights ago. Yeah. Calling it Bean Frank for now. Um, a little, a little spy main talk with Frank West, All Star Spy. Um, this is who you're seeing on the screen right now. Uh, we're gonna go over a demo um, of Gully Wash, which is a playoff map this season. So it's not gonna be played for quite a while in Highlander, at least. Um, but this is a uh, scrim we played with uh, Baby Punching Marathon, and it was a really close game, and that's what we're trying to go for with these demo reviews, is close games, not rolls one way or another. So, Because on rolls, if you're being rolled, you probably don't have much to do, and if your team is rolling, then you probably don't have much to do as a spy. Like, yeah. There's just not much. Mm -hmm. Or Anything any you do is class. probably just yeah. for fun and styling, so. which so, yeah. is fun and all, but... And I am actually going to post the logs for this in the chat right now. Oh, getting mathematical. Yeah. Bringing it home. I wonder if I can open up the stream. It usually doesn't work. Or rather, the stream does, but the stream chat generally doesn't. Yeah, in Steam chat browser. Is kind of annoying. Oh, and you're in Steam. Oh, I see. Yeah, Does you play full this? screen. Uh, I don't know. Oh uh, yeah, and if I alt tab with these settings, the demo stops yeah, that's playing. That's fine. So. If anyone has any questions directly for Frank, go ahead and post them in chat, and or for me, um, and I'll, I'll read them to Frank since he can't see the stream. Yeah, uh, let's let's go ahead and get started though. Okay, on um, go. Yeah, on go. Uh, three, two. One, go. So, five CP maps, I think, are probably the hardest to play a spy, and as a result, I don't think many people really understand how to do them. Um, the other maps are more or less, at least they're somewhat similar to how they are in pubs. They're obviously a little bit different in Highlander, but in, in Highlander, five CP is just totally different, and... A, you pretty much have to figure it out yourself. I don't think there's even any good guides for it. Um, this is kind of a ballsy thing. I should have died, I have one health. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I know that we need to kill that sniper for our mid, because our team's bitching about it. I called out that spy, I think? Or maybe I fell for it. No, I fell for it, because he stabbed someone. Oops. That's fine. I, did, I do like what you did, um, just gully wash specific, you dead ring, you mm -hmm. or held the dead ringer up and walked straight up where our combo normally goes. Um, yeah, that's actually kind of right where you died again there, but, um, but yeah, not, not that far into the round, obviously. But yeah, that's, that's a good spot to, to kind of just check and clear the way for people to. Mm -hmm. And it lets us know if there's anyone hiding behind that choke, which is nice. And also on gully, it's kind of hard to get behind people before... Mid is over, basically. Mm -hmm. Mid tends to be over by the time you get behind people with Invis Watch or Cloak and Dagger, so... I like running Dead Ringer there, just... It may not... It may make me a bit more obvious, but at least I can affect the mid-fight. And this, I'm... I think I'm waiting... Yeah, I'm waiting for my charge to come up. Just barely get it. Yeah. A little bit of luck there. I'm really... I think he was out of rockets, so... <laughs> I'm switching away from Dead Ringer. I don't usually bother to switch watches without dying, because usually I'm just like, I'll just go and die, it's almost as quick as, I'll just go and try for something, I might as well, but mm -hmm. in that situation, I'm like, Dead Ringer at any place out of mid is generally bad. There, on 5CP, there are two places where I run Dead Ringer, and one of them is sometimes to mid, and the other time, I'll, I think happens later, so I'll discuss it when it happens. Um, but it's basically pushing last with your team. Oh god, this is, this is where he taunts power through the glass, and power just walks out and headshots him. <laughs> That's so rude. Yeah, um, I love power. <laughs> so 5CP, you don't always have an opening. Like here, there's no opening. Yeah, like, obviously. If they're... there's any kill I'm going to get, so I'm just calling, I'm watching, I'm, I'm there. So I can do this. Yep. You it, just have just to wait. Ridiculously patient. That's. Mm -hmm. You just have to be super patient at times, and at other times, really, you just have to go for it. And I'd say the most important skill for playing a 5CP is... 
being able to read the other team's intentions, not just where they're going to go in a second, but where they're going to go in a minute. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I'll call pushes before the enemy team, like, is even setting up for it, because I'll just sort of, like, you can see. Yeah, yeah. And that's not really something I can teach you, or anybody. I feel like it's just something you have to learn by watching. So, it's not very helpful, I suppose, for tutorial to say I can't teach you something, but... Um... Was this the game where you keep, like, oh, don't worry about that mini sentry, I'll sap, and then a sheep kills it, like, a second yes, before, like, keeps... like, right after you divert to actually mm -hmm. go and get it, he kills it, yeah. Because I was willing to die to get that mini sentry, because it meant always oh. stand on things. Always stand yeah, on things. Yeah, that's brilliant, actually, because you would have been caught out there. Mm -hmm. But he flamed always. only at, like, a, like the same level as him. Mm -hmm. There is almost no, there are almost no pyros that flame upwards. I think Frilly does. She's plays medic now, but because I used to play with her, oh. and then fuck up this. Yeah, that just was bad just luck. bad. No, it was bad execution. I could have followed him better. Like that's, I I don't think I have as good mechanics as a lot of other spies do. Like, I think I think Hay would have gotten that stab. I think Evan would have gotten that stab. Honestly, like uh -huh. it's just my mechanics aren't always the greatest. That's definitely I'm, my weak point. I'm kind of with you on the pyro side of that. Like mechanically, I'm not amazing or anything, but. I think you like, play I'm not, I'm not very smart. I, yeah. yeah. I, I think I'm the best thinking spy, so I make up for it. But like, like, yeah. My consistency on stabbing and my consistency, you know, I know you said like in the stream last night, like or the other night, you were talking about my aim and how I say it's not as good as it should be, and you think it's ridiculous. But like, I can make ridiculous shots a pretty good percentage of the time. But like, easy shots that I should be making. I'll make less than I should. That's what I mean by, like, bad aim. That's that was a little drop. bit of a gift. Yeah. I don't really, like... So I was gonna get someone there, and I was just fortunate the medic was the furthest back. Um, I knew they'd be vulnerable because they were pushing. Mm -hmm. And it's that's pretty basic. What was my point? Oh yeah, so my point, mechanically, I'm shitty. Oops, I just switched away from myself. Let me go back. You are up in one second. Yet? Now okay. you are. It keeps the order if you're right clicking or left clicking or whatever, so. Yeah, but I mashed it because I panicked. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we, I'm so used to mashing. Oh, I should say this. I meant to say it in the other night's stream. When I die, um, I don't just focus on one person, generally speaking. Sometimes you can't switch your camera because of a bug in the um, tournament mode. Sometimes that can be useful, because you get to watch your dead body and you can still see the team when they think you don't have intel, but generally speaking, what I do when I die is I just mash my mouse buttons and cycle through everyone on my team like three times in a couple seconds. Um, because I need to get a whole map of the battlefield and all the little tiny things that you just can't call, but they could help me. They help me know exactly where everyone's standing or what they're doing. And uh, you'll notice I also keep my cursor on the medic a lot, mm -hmm. because I'm looking for his uber. Oh. oh. See, that's that's another thing. I could have gotten that. He was right there, and then I sort of saw pudding coming, and... Or not pudding. Cygnus, not pudding. yeah. Cygnus. Um, and I just got nervous a little bit, and I flinched a little tiny bit. But you'll notice I'm using cloak and dagger a lot here, and I don't... Cloak and Dagger is the hardest watch to use, and the benefit you get out of it compared to the Invis watch isn't major. But I think it is the best spy watch the majority of the time. I was hoping the Heavy would come in. Yeah. If, they, if they came in straight, I would have been there to stab them. If they go under, we've got people to take care of that. I really wanted to make sure he was dead. Yeah, he probably shouldn't have done that. This is, I remember this. We, yeah, we held this mm -hmm. point, though. He just randomly gets every one of us, and then DJC walks yeah. down and shoots <laughs> It was a little bit clumsy, but I think it was, like, in retrospect, that wasn't worth it, but at the time, I think it was an okay choice, because yeah. we really needed that heavy dead. If he didn't, if he had walked up on the point with 200 instead of 20, that could have been a big issue. Mm -hmm. And we lost our scout and spy defending last, which isn't a big deal. And that's spy for you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I didn't even... Maybe, maybe talk about that a little bit, just, you know, talk about... The spy is, you know, it's it's a disposable class. You're going to die a lot. Mm -hmm. And that's why I don't like when people rely... That's one reason I don't like when people rely mm -hmm. overly on the Dead Ringers, because it seems to just waste a lot of their time. Because sure, they're keeping and themselves alive, but they're not doing as much for their team. Evan didn't run the Dead Ringer much on this map, did he? I don't think he likes it on 5 CPs as know. much.
I had already flubbed, so I went for the yeah. highest priority target that I could. As soon as I bumped the demo, I'd messed up, because mm -hmm. he went back. And he, he, I'm pretty sure he knew, so... That, that's a downside to the Dead Ringer. Um, you know... When you don't have control over where you cloak, and you don't have control over where you decloak. Um, I ran it a little bit because I get frustrated, and it's always good to mix it up a little bit. Because if you're on Dead Ringer and they don't think you are, you can sometimes get away with something. But generally on 5 CP, it's not a good idea, and that's that's the reason why I'm right there. Because you just you get fucked. You don't have anything to do. You, you, there's they're wide open areas, and you if a safe decloak with the Dead Ringer on a 5 CP is generally the the safe. The safe decloak is one where you decloak an area where you're basically useless, and you might as well be in front of them with your own team. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it's just not useful, I guess. Like you can't, you can't get close. You have to do a whole full approach on someone, and the I don't know. I don't like it. It doesn't work. Um, and you don't need to stay alive. Like, there's no reason. You're actually less likely to stay alive with the Dead Ringer on a 5 CP, I think. Yeah, because you, you're you pretty much forced to walk directly at mm -hmm. them, yeah. Right. I mean, I guess you could theoretically stay alive way behind them, but that's not useful to anybody. You might as well be dead. Whether you're alive or dead isn't terribly important, unless there's something that needs to be called out. Um, again, I'm running it at mid because I find it hard to get through with Invis-Watch, mm -hmm. and I want to be able to influence the mid, because mids are really important. Mid is almost like separate. Mid, mid kind of feels like you're almost playing a cough map, and then everything else is a 5CP. Yeah. So, everything I say about 5CP doesn't really apply to mid. Um, that being said, I think I'm going to run Invis-Watch more often on Gullywash mid, because Invis-Watch will be just long enough to get me behind them. Cloak and Dagger won't get me behind them. Yeah. And I'm kind of unwilling to drop my Cloak and Dagger for Invis-Watch a lot. But I should be comfortable, more comfortable with that, because Cloak and Dagger, if I run Cloak and Dagger, I won't get all the way behind them, and I'll get into an awkward position that I never like being in the Cloak and Dagger, which is where I want to go somewhere and I don't have the Cloak. And I feel like that's a situation a lot of people get into who aren't used to the Cloak and Dagger, or who don't run it like I do, in an aggressive style. They... People will just sit there, and they'll be like, I don't have enough cloak to move, I have to sit here. And, like, that can happen, you can get unlucky, but it's something that happens to me less than once per game, generally speaking. Because mm -hmm. I know when to cloak and when to decloak. You just need to not... You just need to not cloak when you're around your team. You need to know where you're going, you need to know the most efficient routes to get there. You need to know where the enemy team is. And yeah, just for more basic stuff here, like while you're the the types of things you're calling out while you're kind of sitting here, you're you're looking for sentry gun position, you're looking for combo position, and more important, you're looking for uber charge rate, right? Mhm. Mm now I thought I could jump on those crates, but I think that's a different version of Gully. Oh, is this a part where I just look at this? That's fucked. That is frustrating. I don't know. That's a spot I, I tend to check when we're yeah, holding I mean, there, it's too. A, yeah. I'm not saying, like, oh, you know, bad luck. That's an obvious spot, and I was sitting in there for a long time. Yeah. I was... I, I shouldn't have gone there maybe so soon, but... <laughs> I, call, I call him out on Hex, <laughs> even though he didn't. I just... <laughs> I just, like... Ugh. I don't know. It happens. I'm relying a little bit too much on luck here, I think. Um, And I'm getting caught out for it. And I think I think later in the scrim, I stop relying on luck so much. Cause you don't have to. Like people say, spy is a luck-based class, but like everything is. Like there's that yeah. headshot that you almost got, but you didn't. There's the air shot where they strafed into it or not. Now oh. he actually fell for that because I jumped backwards and I didn't yeah. expect him to. And again, it I think I'm a little sloppy in the beginning of the. Didn't game look like it was there. until you actually bumped him. He actually, no, I bumped him and I, I had the, the knife raise, which I guess you can't see probably a view models off. I could have stabbed him there, but I didn't because I didn't take advantage. And that's not something you should rely on. I was I was sort of hoping we were still defending that a bit, but we weren't. Yeah. 
I'm running Dead Ringer here because I th oh this is the other situation where I think it's actually a good idea to run Dead Ringer. And I'm not sure if it actually happens, but they're down a lot, and we're up, and we have Uber advantage. So I'm pretty sure we're gonna push before I could get in position with any other watch. Um, pushing into last using Dead Ringer with your team can be really effective. Um, especially if you've been running Invis Watch the whole game. Like, I maybe could have gone to position here, but I would have no cloak, I have no mobility. Yeah. So instead, I think we take a little too long to push. Maybe we had to. It's, yeah, that's one of the things that's up with our team. Like, it happens, but I I'm think, gonna dead ring yeah. in here, and I can sort of be a combat class. I actually get flashed, and now I'm, I'm blocking... I'm doing a neat little trick where I block his shots. And I they remember this. Alive. Yeah. Yeah. So I get that. Because they're expecting me to run Invis Watch. And. Right, like. How do I say this? I'm just kind of tired. Sorry if I'm rambling a bit. Um. Because I pushed in with the rest of my team, there's a lot of chaos, and they didn't have time to keep track of how I dead ring. Or where I was, or even if I dead rung. Mm -hmm. um, spy dead rung is a valuable call when you're all sort of not doing anything, but in the middle of a battle, it's not going to get called. Um, and in addition, when a spy dead rings, the expected action is they're going to run away. And they're going to get to a safe spot. Where what I did is, I ran in, I made sure to decloak before the battle was fully over, so I had the cover of sound, so that they wouldn't hear me. But... I was right at the end of the battle when they're all like, okay, we're recuperating and we need to sit on the point. And that's when they're vulnerable, because they're thinking, there's no spy, and we're done, and there's just like a sigh of relief moment. I'm going to put pressure, I knew I'd die there, but I put pressure on the point to force them on it. Yeah, and that's... It makes it easier for the rest of our team to spam. Unfortunately, it doesn't work out. I don't really know what happened uh, with the rest know. of the attack, but... Our, our last pushes are really sloppy. It wasn't until, yeah. like, I think... I don't know if this is the round where I just go under and I bring them all to the point that we actually end up getting it, but that's oh, yeah. almost that's almost always what you have to do pushing last on Gully. With so many people, oh, I let our scout die. Yeah. <laughs> bad. I was so surprised. I was just like, oh, sorry, guy. Um, on five CPs in Highlander, there's so many fucking classes, especially defensive ones, that can sit back and shoot at the point while being safe. You need to draw them onto the point a lot of the time yeah. to get it. And Gully's really good for that. There's a lot of ways you can do it, and it's kind of necessary because they can sit up on the raised platforms and spam. Um, so it's really valuable to have a spy get a pick on a class that can stop a push, like a pyro or sniper, and then just get a third or a half, or even just a quarter on the capped. And then they, someone has to go and touch him to stop it. I shouldn't have even bothered cloaking. I should have tried to get a headshot. It wouldn't have mattered. I was dead. Um, realistically speaking, once I realized that they were getting mid more or less uncontested, I should have cloaked and gone around the corner instead. I don't know. Any questions yet in the stream or anything? Nothing yet. I'm just trying to remember how this played out. I think we were kind of yeah, crap really. for a couple of rounds, and then we kind of mm -hmm. rolled from there. I definitely take a while to warm up sometimes, and I don't think I, I think I'm starting to warm up around now. I think our team in general kind of does. I'm calling where the sniper is and where the scout is, and it didn't help. <laughs> um, but we'll let Power know that the sniper was still there and still waiting, and so we got we got a pick because we have a good sniper, and I'm coordinating with your sniper to call out where someone is. It saves him like that extra fraction of a second of figuring out where someone is. Mm -hmm. I think it's paradox now, actually. Oh, is it? Yeah, this is Pow oh. was with us for, like, uh, the first round and then had to leave. Oh, yeah, that's right, he left really quick. So I'm calling that they're pushing. They, they, they rotated really fast, so we wouldn't have known otherwise. I don't get the med pick, but it doesn't matter, really, because... They're not doing anything with this demo. An Uber demo with no support yeah. is not good. And the engineer's bullets sort of magically go around me, yeah. which I'm fine with. <laughs> That, that happens. You'd be surprised how often you get lucky with the cloak and dagger compared to other things. The other day in... I guess it was in a pub, but like... I was just sitting around the corner and a heavy came around the corner and aimed straight at me and fired for like a full second and I didn't get touched by a bullet. Like, it happens. I don't know exactly how, but... You, I, I feel like 
the cloak and dagger. The sort of a they, they just don't know where you are. With the Invis-Watch, either you're in the same spot, or <laughs> both fighting <laughs> over the teleport and it dies. Um, with the Cloak and Dagger, like with the Invis-Watch, either you stay in roughly the same area and you have nine seconds or less. Sh and then you're there and you're revealed. Sheep up in the sneaky spot. Yep. Um, and with the with the Cloak and with the Dead Ringer, obviously you need to be even further away because you're all... I only got those two stabs because they were fighting. Yeah. But that's kind of basic. I just thought I'd say that. But with a dead ringer, obviously you have to be far away from anybody because of the noise. Unless there's a huge amount of battle happening and then you can decloak kind of close. Um, with the invis watch, either you're in the same area and you have nine seconds and then you're caught because I stayed in the same area or you're going to the nearest ammo pack. Like, it, you're really predictable with the invis watch. And a lot of people are like... Oh, it gives you more cloak, and it's better, and it, but it, it really just ties you so hard. Like, you can't choose when you want to go somewhere. You have to have full ammo to do it. If you want to go certain places, you have to get ammo packs, and everybody knows to check those, and ammo packs are usually in congested areas anyway. With the cloak and dagger, the most valuable thing about it is the fast recharge time. And the least valuable thing about it is that I get really too aggressive and I just run into people. But again, I feel like... Oh, actually, we had uber advantage. I shouldn't have done that. Oops, that was a bad play. But <laughs> I was gonna say, you know, we're sort of in a stasis. Yeah. So it's okay to just throw yourself away on the chance of getting something good. But now that I'm looking at uber percentages, I should have stayed in position and we might have been able to push if I'd waited a little bit longer. Again, I'm going dead ringer because I know we're about to push. Um, even though we're even now, I think we're just gonna push anyway. I think I asked, are we gonna push? Maybe even. I know I did that at some point this scrim. Um, we end up not pushing, we end up being a little bit scared of last, which we do this whole game, we're a little bit too scared yeah. of last, I think. I'm still friendly pyro, I think I'm just going down there for recon, I don't, I'm not actually gonna push in yet. I get far enough away, not just for the dispenser, but also hopefully they won't hear me decloak. They may think that they actually killed you, although you go and shoot someone and ruin that. Well, the sniper was there. Um, I had to pressure him. Yeah, no. I'm <laughs> I don't kill the, sni the soldier. I don't go for him. It was a hard pick, and I wasn't going to do much. The demo's really valuable, and I can go back in. Did I snap the gun? I guess I did. Yeah, you no, did it not? No, I, I think we're still firing. I think I decided... I'm, sometimes I fuck up with sapping because it takes longer to sap than it does to shoot or stab. But yeah, like, and I just, I think I also decided that I'd rather go on point and harass them than deal yeah. with a level one. And getting the demo there, I saw you prioritize that. That's, mm -hmm. that's great because that's really the biggest threat. If we just like, when, like once the demo's down, we can pretty much flood the point. Like that's mm -hmm. that's the biggest threat for for that. Um, obviously and the again, heavy and stuff's still when there. there when but... you're when there's going to be chaos, I guess in general, Dead Ringer when there's going to be chaos, Cloak and Dagger when there's not. Invis watch when you really need to get somewhere far but still to cloak near people. Which is, if that sounds like a specific instance, it's because I think Dead Ringer, I, I think Invis watch has a very specific use and isn't useful outside of it. I snuck up behind our own team. I, <laughs> I didn't realize we were holding there. Yeah, no, they started doing these weird mids that. Mm -hmm. it... Mids sort of ended up weird, and I. Yeah. I mean, I think I, I think I did all right because I got good picks, but. It ended up not going well for them, if I remember correctly, mm -hmm. because their demo was not in very good spots. Now, you notice I flickered there? Uh -huh. I don't care. You'd be surprised. Flickering does not make you that visible, and people don't... Bumping into the sniper, not looking behind you, that makes you visible. But, um, you can get away with a lot of flickering, especially if you're farther away. Like, just walking with no cloak. You wouldn't think it'd work as well as it does. I think part of it is just that people are so unused to Cloak and Dagger being used for anything but sitting in one spot forever that they don't look for that. But it works. It works for now, anyway. It works for me. You can, you can, if you need to get just a little bit further, you can. I'm going to do the thing I tried earlier where I'm here as they push in. Because they, no one's going to be in that corner but me, so they're not going to look there, they're not going to shoot there. I don't get more than one kill because the mini shuts me down a bit, but I helped a little. 
Do I go in Vizwatch yet? I really should go in Vizwatch for this mid. No, I don't. I'm not smart enough. Um. Oops. Deadringer doesn't have. It effectively shortens the amount of cloak you have because you can't decloak close to people. So I have to go left here. If I go right, I if I go right, I have to go straight behind them through their choke. And if I go left, this is not a good way to go. Everything I just said was wrong. I just did a wrong move, and I'm gonna get paid. I'm gonna die. I'm dead. Uh, wow. Yeah, not, not yet. Here we go. I think we pushed like, him back enough that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we did push him back. Like, I, the mid goes okay anyway, but it had nothing to do with me. I totally fucked up there, because... <laughs> exa it's, it's great that I was talking about that, because I screwed up in a perfect way to illustrate it. Like, I should have... The only good way to do Dead Ringer in that direction, I think, is drop down, because you get closer to them. Mm -hmm. I did wrong in the middle of the front of their offense, and I had to go all the way through this sort of long line to the back of their offense. I'm going to spawn switch here. Um, I think I'm still running Dead Ringer because I think we're about to push. Yeah, we have full charge and they don't, and we're down a sniper. No, I guess I'm running Invis-Watch. I could have run Dead Ringer, but I think we haven't been pushing. Maybe I just decided since we haven't been. And <laughs> Evie is ready for me to be on that <laughs> barrel, so I'm not going back. If you get caught out on one spot, don't go back to that spot unless you notice it's the kind of team that's not going to check a spot twice. I probably should have gone for the demo over that, but what I don't know stab? what the fuck happened. What? <laughs> that stab? Blame Valve. Blame Valve. Spy mains. Spy mains. Whatever, you already like killed like everything. Yeah. Like that like, was super important. The heavy was dead and that was probably good enough to... Yeah. When we're pushing like, with the heavy, like killing their heavy is kind of important. Mm -hmm. yeah. When I killed the demo, I think it was the second to last person alive, so who even cares? I sat the dispenser because I figured... Uh, Points. If the, if the push fucks up... <laughs> That helps. You know? Yeah. Like, their meds dead, killing so. killing the demo won't help if the push fucks up. And I also was pretty sure the demo was about to turn around, but the heavy didn't call me, I guess, in the middle of everything. That mini's been pissing our team off. Yeah. So much. And now there's some flailing, and then I die. Beautiful. Flailing and death. I think. I think, like, almost all of these mids go bad for me, and I think it's because I'm not running in Vizwatch. I think I ran Cloak and Dagger that time. Um, and I think that's why I never really help at mid. Outside of the first round where I use Deadringer very well. Um, where, when I, I use Deadringer to go straight through their choke, um, it really helped. Now let's see what Evan's running. He is running Revolver Spicicle Deadringer. Yeah. Excellent. Now, actually, on my point of view, you just saw him go in. Mm -hmm. Now, he has to decloak with his team. He's right here. Yeah. And it doesn't help. Like, what he could have done was de was maybe dead ring all the way up to our balcony, but that's risky. And once he's up there, he can't ambassador people from up there. Um, he probably won't be able to drop down because we heard him dead ring. Like, it's just, it's not useful. Yeah. It's, I guess, let me put it, in sort of a general term, and this doesn't just apply to Spy, I see a lot of people doing this, especially Pyros and um, Snipers, I'd say, too. There's sort of a thing where, I think it's sort of a pub mentality, where you, you're killing the person, like, you see a person who's going to kill you, who's, who's going to be the most trouble for you, like, the Sniper sees the Scout, or, I see this a lot, the Spy sees the Pyro. And they go for that, because you're thinking, if I kill the pyro, I'm more likely to escape, um, I'm more open to get another pick. Because um, the pyro is giving you trouble, and I think it's just sort of an emotional reaction. This pyro is my enemy, I want to kill him. That's the opposite. You need to kill the person that's most harmful to your team. And sometimes that's the pyro. But sometimes it's not. My team called out that gun, which is why I went straight down there to get it. And then just went for, again, once you get, once I get my primary target, I just kind of go for whoever the fuck happens to be around, yeah. and it doesn't usually work, and which is fine. Yeah, you were, I got the gun. You were on the point, and they, like, mm -hmm. fell back onto the point, too. Like, that tiny right, bit of cap time you hit, like, but yeah, like, I, I, I was going to talk about, um, so I think the Evan style. So I think Spicicle helps the... you, Spicicle, Dead Ringer, Revolver, helps you live longer, helps you put out damage, and... 
helps you kill the classes that are a problem for Spy, like Pyro. Um, Cloak and Dagger and Invisible Option being stealthier and, and not I focusing on your gun use. I'm gonna fuck you up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, <laughs> you, you might have fucked me up. You've probably saved my life, though. I don't think I would have gone that heavy. Um, none of those things are... Anyways, living longer, putting out DPS, and... And, and, and dealing with the classes that are difficult for the spy, none of those are really helpful in Highlander. Mm -hmm. All of those are things that <laughs> might... Wait, what happened? I missed it. Did he, did he shoot himself? <laughs> he tried to jump up, he tried to jump up drop down, Overseer was right there, he completely missed her and rocketed himself and killed himself. Oh, I, I think... Oh man, that's beautiful. I think I remember there was a call, I'm like, there's a soldier in drop down, I'm not joking, or something. <laughs> So what's valuable for a spy is key picks at key times, um, giving out comms, being there to pinch and put pressure, and play off other people's pressure. I should really just decloak here, but I get lucky. <laughs> because I'm inside like the rest of my team, I was really dangerous, but I don't know, I guess it worked out. Um, I'm not going to be stealthy at this point, so I'm just going to go for shooting. Meta is very low health, so I kill him. I figure they've seen me, and by the time I get... Like, I could have cloaked and gotten into position faster, but the thing is, that position would have been... By the time I get into position, we wouldn't have been fighting anymore. So I wouldn't have an opening, I wouldn't be helpful. So instead of using my usual stealth route, I just shoot. Hmm. Like, that's when it's appropriate to shoot, I think. Um, when you're in a position where, by the time you get in a position to get a pick, or get... By the time you get into a proper position, you will have... Your team won't be helping, you won't be fighting, and whatever pick you get is useless. But like, just living to put out damage, going back to an earlier topic, like I said, I'm kind of rambling, I'm a little tired. Um, like if you're just putting out damage, that's not helpful because you're, you're shooting like overhealed soldiers yeah. that are just getting heals again. And yeah, it looks oh. like that's the time limit, yeah. yeah. And that's the time limit. Oh, that's why we were pushing so derpy, is because the time was low. Oh, we were yeah, just like, fuck that's... it, let's just try to go and get this. <laughs> let's just try and be as aggressive as possible. Yeah. That's right. But yeah, um, let me post the log again. I, I, I want to compare, like, Evan's style of mm -hmm. yours. Like, I think Evan puts out more damage. It, the he, damage he puts out, I'm like, about sure 300 more damage than you. Well, the thing is that damage numbers include backstabs, I think, yeah. which are, like, for it, I don't, it's not, so that's not really accurate, there's no, I'm wondering when he, if he, when he, when he talks about his damage, if he's looking at TF2 logs, and I don't, because like, backstabs, like people, I, I've heard people say, oh he puts out as much damage as his heavy does, but I don't think they understand that the TF2 logs includes backstab damage, which is, mm. I'm not actually sure if it counts two times, or six times the target's current health, but either way, that's gonna skew the the damage numbers for Spy are usually really high because of that, yeah. so... Like, I don't think people understand... Even if we assume... Let's just assume, in a magical world, that... Using the, the Spicicle Dead Ringer Revolver is, is putting out more damage than the Heavy. What damage is that? The reason it's putting out more damage is because it's always doing a little bit of damage. Mm -hmm. In the same way that, like... You know, technically, if you if you hit someone with the with the kukri that makes people bleed, yeah, they'll take damage over time. But that's not useful. You yeah. want to do damage now. You want to do damage when it matters. Just sort of gradually doing damage forever is useless because there's medics, there's health kits, there's dispensers, and then you get shut down. Yeah, and I wish TF2 logs would show. Like, I'm looking at at um, kill numbers for different weapons here. It looks like he gets 12 revolver kills. That's respectable. He gets 10. Uh, backstabs, where you, as you had something like 17 backstabs, and let's. I think see. I had like one or two ambassadors. Yeah. I don't even know if I got a headshot kill. I don't know. When I, I one thing about my gun use is I have good aim. Um, but it is extraordinarily rare that I'll fire more than two shots. Mm -hmm. Generally, it's one shot and I cloak, or t one and then just enough for another, and then I'm out. Yeah. But yeah, if you if you look at the logs here, that, that style, he gets one more kill than you. Um, but And we know for a fact, like, even I think even he would admit that the kills he's getting are less important. Yeah. What he's, tr what he's trying to do is distract, but 
again, as long as we're not stupid, and we don't send, like, three people to, away from the point who are important to chase him, mm -hmm. which is totally unnecessary. Like, that's, that's, I feel like that's very basic something. Like, don't everybody chase the spy. That's something you learn in, in Steel, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, that's something I remember our team, like, what my first team grappling with and dealing with in our very first tournament. Yeah. Like I don't, f I don't feel like that's gonna happen. I mean, it might happen in pugs because in pugs it's less, dis it's less organized. But it's sort of like having the sort of I meta game idea of I may not be getting the kills that are as important, but I'm like helping out anyway. Like that's something you do when everything else that you could be doing doesn't work. Yeah. Like I will, I will go for a distraction if I can't get a kill. But I'm gonna go for a kill first because mm -hmm. I'd rather have a dead person yeah, than and someone absolutely. who like, is temporarily you getting, gone. You getting almost double his backstabs. Like you're getting important targets and they're dead immediately. Mm -hmm. It's not something that, like, I, I guarantee you, if you watch watch his his videos that he's made, it's you see almost every person he kills has 50 health or less to begin with before he even starts shooting at them, and that's fine. He's getting kills, but teams don't push the off when they have... yeah teams don't push yeah, off that like... teams have already pushed off of the things that he's cleaning up for his team and the, like, the two the, pick the, classes in the... highlander are so important for helping teams to push mm -hmm. and yeah i don't know you just like in highlander there's just so much more mass so to speak behind mm -hmm. each team you need you need to push on an advantage you need to get like there's so many more like in sixes it, it, advantages is very is very sort of is fluid and like one team has it or the other and they're always pushing back and forth and it's it's more rare that you get to a situation where there's a static and then and that's when you see like a pick class and that's why they're not common in sixes because they don't have the mobility to keep up with a constant back and forth um and you don't need a pick class because generally one team or the other already has advantage yeah um and just like there's what there's but, but in, in Highlander there's so much mass you need to get more of an advantage and there's more situations there's more choke points where both teams are going to sit on opposite sides of a battlefront and go you first mm -hmm. and there's there's what there's three classes really that ever do any real picking there's the, the sniper the spy and the soldier occasionally with his dive bombs mm -hmm. and just losing one of those so, classes is such use, a big deal like some teams use scout too I would yeah. say I don't think but that works against so. the bigger, like, the better teams that yeah. are generally all pretty well protected. Except for on some Koth maps, I don't think that yeah, works. Yeah. I'd say you can sort of make a, a, a scout be a pick class on, like, Asheville, because you can't cover the whole place with a mini. Mm -hmm. But in general, I agree with you. Yeah. And, and, and I, I, I don't want to seem like we're focusing out Evan or anything. Like, his, his play style, it, it works for what it is. It works really well for what he's wanting to do. I just don't feel like, in the higher scheme of things, it's what a spy needs to be doing for I the good of I guess I'm just seeing a team. lot of people... And I wouldn't even say Evan started that concept. I would say Stabby started that yeah. concept, um, like, two, a season or two ago, where the thing he would do was sit with his team in Deadringer and Ambassador. No, he didn't use the spicicle. I don't even think it was out yet when he was doing that. Really, I don't even think he does that as much anymore. I, th I think he does. He plays differently now. But I, I saw, you know, he'd sit back and sort of ambassador, and then occasionally go in for a random pick on someone with his dead ringer. And it was like, you're getting kills, but you're, they're not valuable kills. Mm -hmm. They don't. They don't matter. And I feel like a lot. It, like it's. You know, I, I, I make fun of Spy a lot, a lot of people do. I think there's a lot of circle jerking around it. But I, do, I don't think it's easy to improve a Spy, because I don't think there's good feedback. Like, a soldier, you get a dive bomb on someone you know you're supposed to, and you kill them. Like, as Sniper, you, you shoot heads and get killed. Like, you know, as Medic, you die less. But, like, a Spy, like, what kills you get and when, you have total freedom to choose when you get the kills. And that's not something that, like, you don't immediately get a feedback of, oh, you did a good job. You need to look, you need to really think about why you're getting a kill, and you need to, you need to figure it out for yourself. And I just want to make sure people are doing that and not just going for the most kills that they can with whatever they're using. Because I see, I just see a lot of people copying, like, before I saw a lot of people, they wa they'd watch Stabby and sit back in Ambassador... Um, and make it kind of work, and then they'll try to do that, and now I'm seeing more people using Spice Gold Dead Ring or Revolver, and I don't know what the next thing will be. Maybe someone will think that the Ur is really great. I don't know, <laughs> but 
<laughs> like, I've, I've seen it. Uh, well, I mean, we're seeing it um, as, I'm seeing it as well in the pyro um, class mm -hmm. where, you know. With the reserve shooter. Yeah, and, the reserve shooter I do shooter think the stuff. set is better. I don't agree with you on, I think the set is better. I, I don't. I, I lose some opportunities I get to do a huge amount of burst damage, and I just don't like that. I guess it's yeah. the, I mean, I guess you have to give up the extent, I guess in my head, like, I'm not a great pyro, and I, in my head, like, the, I sort of sometimes mark certain things as just, like, they don't matter, like, and in my head, the extinguisher is something that doesn't happen. I think there are a lot of pyros who, wrong. you know, if you're using the, the extinguisher and you're trying to you're kind of a little over reliant on it. You find that you get shut down by better players a lot. There's still definitely places for that, mm -hmm. and I'm, in general, way happier having that out. Um, especially if I'm taking an Uber or if I'm get I get caught out behind something. I, you know, I need to be able to if if there's any possible chance for me to kill someone important, I need to be able to do it. Or uh, one thing I'll do is during attacks, even when if, if I'm not Ubered, if I can get to the side of the heavy wall, you know. If there's a heavy medic, heavy medic pair, like both pairs shooting at each other, the heavies have to focus each other first. And if I can get up on the heavy, and he's just dead instantly, and you know our heavy Gareth will come away with you know 200 more health than he would have otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's just I don't always get kills with it, but I actually do um, using it sparingly do quite a bit of damage with the thing. And I just. I, and I suppose you could also say having it makes people they can't they have to be a little more wary yeah. of it too. I just so there's that. The, the speed boost is ten percent. It's not really I don't know. I just I haven't. That's more than the medic. Yeah, it's more than the medic, but at the same time I I the way I'm playing lately at least, and I feel like I'm doing pretty well. I don't need that speed boost. I need damage. The, the, I guess I get The speed that. boost like there's there's so many like kind of stalemate areas and. You know, on payloads, you move at the cart's pace, basically. Mm -hmm. um, I guess, like, I guess this is just one of those instances, like I was talking earlier, where spies will kill things that are dangerous to spies, and snipers will kill things that are dangerous to snipers. Like, it's just such a narrowing of focus. Even, I'm, I'm doing it. Like, mm -hmm. I see a, a pyro using the spy set, and in my head, he gave up an extinguisher that doesn't matter, because it doesn't matter to me, and what he gets is effectively, like, a 10% wider search area for me. And that's frustrating to me, but like somewhat, I you know, I, like, I would rather have the spy coming to me than me going off and chasing him because mm -hmm. on the you know on the chance that I'm um, I'm not in the right spot, that's an, that's a you know a, a cue for him to kind of sneak in, and it, you know it still happens, but our combo I I feel like maybe the maybe our heavy gets stabbed because that's the heavy's probably the easiest target for spies aside from the sniper. And that's just going to happen, mm -hmm. but in general, our combo doesn't die to spies, regardless of... Yeah, heavy is, like, always, almost always my backup plan yeah. when I'm anywhere near the combo. Like, if I fuck something up, it's like, well, at least I can go kill the heavy. Like when I'm in... When he I'm can't, in, he can't yeah. turn around. When I'm in spy check mode, I'm right with the mm -hmm. combo. If anything comes in there, I'm checking it. I'm checking corners and stuff for them, too. So I don't have to be moving that much quicker to okay. do it. Like, I... Something you said actually made me think of something that I think a lot of silver teams and below tend to do, and even even sometimes plat teams, um, which is they think of Pyro as spy checker and no one else has to do mm -hmm. it. And, like, everybody knows that they should turn around and call out spy if they see it, but, like, they're always like, Pyro, protect this, Pyro, protect that. Like, first off, if there's a spy that needs chasing down, make sure you have your scout do it because he's fast and it's, yeah. there's nothing a spy can do about it, whereas I can outrun a Pyro, I can, I can outsmart a Pyro. I can't... A, a scout can check three possible hiding places before I get a chance to pick which one yeah. I want to use. So there's that. But also, like, everybody needs their turn around. Mm -hmm. if, and if this... Like, and not everybody can. Like, you can say, well, this, our sniper is getting picked a lot and we need him up. Then you need to either put him near a sentry gun or you need to have him shoot... be sniping with the rest of your combo. Like, I see a lot of teams where, like, pyros who could be doing more for their team, but, like... That someone in the combo gets stabbed, like, you need to spy check here, and then, like, this gun will get stabbed, you're like, you need to spy check over there, and the pyros are just, like, run ragged by their yeah, team. Yeah, it's... So... It's frustrating. It's everybody's least, responsibility. Yeah. Like, like, the other night when we subbed, um... I think Lee OJ... Is that his name? Lee OJ? Lee OJ, something like that, I don't know. Yeah, he was on the other team, and he's, he's good. Um, and he shut me down a lot, but, like, I got the feeling, like, he would just fall on or the... Or like, Yamoj, yeah. 
he would just chase me away, like, and then you guys would push in, and, like, he wouldn't be there. Mm. And that's a situation where Evan's style would work. If you know there's someone who's really important to the enemy's team's defense who's going to chase you away, then go ahead and do that, because they're giving you a gift. You might as well take it. Mm -hmm. Um, It's just like... Everybody needs to work together, and and it's sort of a general teamwork. It's not just for spies. Like you need to know where your teammates are and cover them from scouts and from like anything flanking, yeah. like a heavy flanking for God's sake. Yeah, and I think the last couple of weeks of scrims that we've had, spies on the other teams tend to be you know upper tier spies. They tend to stu still do well, but and, or they get a lot of kills at least, but they're not getting anything near like what you're doing for us right. yeah they're not getting really important kills they're not absolutely killing pushes or defenses by the people they're killing they're just kind of picking up random folks that aren't near me or aren't near our sentry gun basically i mean i think my most unique ability as it were like what lets me be so effective against good teams is just my ability to read people and read their motion and read what they're doing and like it lets me get away with some ridiculous bullshit that shouldn't work and like 60% of the time it doesn't work but 40% of the time getting a huge play is pretty good like that's a yeah. that's a good thing and um you just like and that's not something I don't even know how to teach that I don't I don't know like I'm good at reading people in real life I can I can I don't know, like, you just need to pay attention to people. I guess I guess what I'd say is watch people, it, even in just a pub. It's easier in a pub because people have much less going on in their heads, generally speaking. No offense to any pubbers out there. Um, you can watch them, like, watch... Don't just think, oh, that's a pyro walking forward spraying fire. Think, like, why is he doing that? Like what? What? What in the design of this? What in in the way this game works, and in the design of his head, and what's happened to him in the past ten seconds, and the way the map looks, is making him do that? And just sort of like move up from there, and start thinking about why other people are doing things, and watch demos, and wa watch STVs, and sort of watch it from a third person view, and and like anyone on a Highlander team, always. Always watch your demos. I think the biggest way to improve is to watch yeah, your own demo. Yeah, it did a ton. But for not, us. <laughs> not, not just from a first person. Like, watch with your team for sure, and like go over team strategies. But also just for individual improvement, watch the other. I mean, obviously watch what the other team's person of your class was doing. But watch in a third person view, the whole team, and what what they look like when they're about to push, and what they look like when they're about to fall back. And what they look like when they rotate or when they fake something. And just sort of like watch those little tells. And like I may, I can usually call a push five seconds before it happens, at least, if not more. Like I can I can see that they're going to rotate or that they might. Like sometimes they'll start to rotate, they consider rotating and then they don't. So I don't always call it out as soon as I know it, it might happen. But like I don't know. There's just like so much stuff going on that people don't have time to like hide what they're doing and where they're looking yeah and you you can play off that so there that's my spy circle jerk <laughs> well uh any questions from the stream before we, we call it a night here i think we both probably have i'm actually in the stream now because i was able to alt tab out so you are also we should be a mod i think in my stream oh yeah oh am i, I think so I don't look like a mod. It might take a minute to show up. I'm pretty sure I made you a mod last night. I don't have the little thing when I typed. I added you again. I don't know, sometimes it just takes a little while, like when you, whenever you first top in the stream. Yeah, there's only 15, 16 people in there right now, so... Looks like we're probably not gonna... Yeah, I think people are just gonna be heading out. That is fine. On this. Yeah, it doesn't. I'm not a mod. Sorry. It'll it'll you it'll do it? it eventually. I promise. Okay. Um. But yeah. So the the first episode. I don't know if it's up on my YouTube channel yet. There were some weird sound issues uh, through parts of it. So if you guys. Did you when you uploaded it? Did you mention the sound issues? I put like... it in the description. Yes. 
Okay, I'm good. Yeah, it looks like it is up and has a couple. Is the knife the only valuable viable knife? I would say default knife. I think on lower levels, some people have managed to convince me from some writings that there's maybe a chance for the eternal reward to work on very low levels, but in general I wouldn't rely on that. Um, big earner is 100% useless, I would say. 25 health is not worth a slight bit of extra cloak when you already get cloak from drop weapons. Um, what other knives are there? Okay, yeah, the, I think the Spicicle can be viable as much as I talk shit on it. I think in some very stalemate maps, it works well with cloak and dagger. You can hide, like, when you're in a situation where you hide in a corner and the pyro randomly flames, you have a chance of getting away and still being there 15 seconds later when no one's moved. Like, I think it's good on Foundry. And I'm getting to the kunai. I have some ideas in my head that the kunai might theoretically be viable for exactly the reason you just said. Like, given three situations, um, one, given that you're in a situation where if you get called out, you are 100% dead. And two, given that in a situation where if you go for a pick, you're def you're almost certainly going to get it. And three, a sort of third situation, given that you're not in a place where you're going to die, where you're going to take 60 damage worth of incidental spam, which is pretty uncommon if you use your cloak right. I feel like it could work, it could actually work in some areas, and I'm going to try and start using it sometime in scrims for, at least to try it out, because I feel like it could work, and I know, actually on Gully, um, a couple seasons ago, I tried it in a scrim against a team that I knew how they played, and it kind of worked. So I want to try it more, because I feel like with 180 health, I could actually get away, I could get the, I could still get the picks I'm getting, and then actually get away in a way that spies don't usually get to. Um, so I don't know. I would, I, in my head, it's theoretically viable, but it doesn't often work out. So, I don't know. I, I want it to be viable. I'm going to make it work. I'm reinventing the meta right here. <laughs> I wouldn't use it with Dead Ringer, though, ever. It's no point. You're just... It's too dangerous. All right, well, if there is nothing else, uh, we'll go ahead and call it a night. I think you probably have to work in the morning. I have school. I actually don't. You don't. I do have to work, but I can do it whenever tomorrow. I don't go in. That's fancy. All right, well, we do have... I know. I have the best job. We do have uh, our first match of the season tomorrow night. Uh, we're going to be scrimming an hour before it, I believe. I'll probably stream that. I probably will not stream the match, but I will record it and probably put it on YouTube. Um... We will. We should try to try to get a Frank West recording of it as well. Record your demo. I. I, I mean, I. Yeah. I have. I. I have a what you call it there auto record. Yeah. We should do that. We need to get your your YouTube channel get your channel going. Yeah, it's just. I don't know. I guess I'm just like I. I've never. I need to just get like Fraps or something. Yeah. Or, that new one, DX Tory. No. I don't know. The X store is a camera for X split. That's I don't know. I'm sure it has other other uses though. Anyway, yep. So this should be going on YouTube soon. Along with some. TF2 Midge gets special credit for asking the only question. That's yes, good job, Midge. Well, thanks for watching, guys. You, we Mitch. will try to try to have some more of these. Uh, I think we might be out of out of scrims to use right now, but uh, yeah, we'll pr we'll maybe try to do something from matches. And yeah, I will. I mean, we have plenty of scrims, but they yeah. aren't necessarily good examples. Yeah, so. we've kind of been rolling the bonus one from mm -hmm. Friday. I might feel be like decent. matches are are often the best because you know everyone's there and playing their yeah. best, yeah. but. Sometimes, on the other hand, sometimes in matches, because of the way it matches up, you play teams that you completely outrank, mm -hmm. so I don't know. I'd like to, one thing I do, again, one thing I like that Evan does is actually, like, he takes a round, like, his favorite round from each match, and I wish he hadn't stopped doing that, because I think that's a really good concept. Um, but it seems like he stopped doing it. Maybe it was hard to do, I don't know. Yeah. But, like, I like that idea of just taking a whole round that you think was a good example. Um, so I might try doing that. 
if I'm not if I don't feel like I'm giving too much away. Yeah. <laughs> Well, chances are the maps won't be played till next season, so unless we make it to the finals and have to pick through maps, but and I've already figured out a couple ways to counter the stuff that I've revealed in some of these in the upwards, because everybody already knew about some of that stuff. Apparently, my my special spot apparently was in hindsight. Oh, really? Nice. Someone told me that, and I, it's when someone told me that I said, "Yeah, it's probably because I stabbed Hind from there." <laughs> Um, we have not ever up uploaded our STV demos in the past. Um, I don't think we're playing, like, I don't think tomorrow night, I don't think we're on our server. I think we're on DMS's server, so. It's, yeah, that's that's one reason, is because we don't always have control over it. If the team gets beaten, or if we get beaten, we don't always necessarily want it out there, so. <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't know. If if we ever play on our server, or if I can get the um, STVs, I'll, I'll try to have a little, maybe like a Dropbox or something with all our um, STV demos. I'll try to at least upload my POV demos. I'm probably actually just going to um, capture every match as we play it with the capture card and then just upload it afterward. I think that's probably going to be an easier thing for me to do. Um, that way you guys get comms and stuff as well. I don't know, it looks fine. I'm like I'm okay with the font right now. I just needed it to be a little bit bigger. And like we basically raised it by two points or Paradox raised it by two points in certain spots and I think that went a pretty long way. Like I've pretty much entirely adjusted to it. I think this the spectator HUD is sometimes is somewhat a little hard to read because I think maybe it's still a little bit too small and all the all everything's really kind of crammed together. I like that it's I like that the grouping of it's smaller, but yeah, it's it's kind of hard to at least in Highlander, pick out um, you know, a certain player that I want to see in Sixes it's not so bad it's just, there's less clutter, but if I'm if I'm looking like for Frank on, on the scoreboard, on the spectator HUD in Highlander, it's sometimes hard to figure out which one he is, and not just because he changes his name all the fucking time <laughs> Okay, Midge, well, on that... Default HUD Master Race. Yeah, yeah Frank uses default. Um, I use default. Dirty scrubs. On, on that note, Midge, uh, now that we know you've dreamt that you had boobs, I'm going to go ahead and, and end the stream. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you next time. I'll be streaming our scrim at least two